Oh, hello there. Welcome to Painting Mall. Uh, <laughs> I just had to do it. Uh, day three of Main Stravaganza is rolling along. We've had so much fun, so many reveals, so many teases, so many spoils, and so much uh, just excitement. Uh, we are Painting Mall. Um, so I have a um, mall coming from the new Shadow Syndicate collection. It sounds like the fall collection, right? The new fall collection um, mall. Um, maybe we'll do fall collection mall, who knows? Actually, I'm gonna keep them pretty pretty simple um, and canonical. Uh, so we got this miniature all built up. We're gonna paint it today. I'm gonna go over uh, how I approach it and maybe it'll provide some inspiration, aspiration, and some education for you. What are we talking about? You're already on the mini cam. I'm still talking to the camera. Keep going. Kevin's already flipped it over there. So I got Maul. Let me get that light the way I want it. And you can see here, um, he's got the little robot legs. He's leaping forth. Um, if you listen to the design uh, panel earlier, uh, Preston was talking about like um, when they were uh, designing this miniature, it was cool to add this uh, sort of piece of broken Mandalore uh, architecture um, to help accentuate his aggressiveness. So, and yeah, I paint. I built this one with the dark saber. I think they showed uh, the other option. If not, teaser. And we're just gonna start some painting. The very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint the lightsaber bright yellow. Now I've done a couple of videos on um, magic effects, glow effects. Um, we did last mini stravaganza. I did Darth Vader um, lightsaber. And I'm going to kind of approach this the same way since it's a bright red lightsaber. I'm going to kind of approach it the same way. What have I already painted today? Um, a ton. Just a ton. So that. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to make a wash. I got like a yellow wash here. Mix that up on the palette. And I'm going to give his face a yellow wash. Now the reason I do this is because I want to set up some pretty bright tones for my reds. And yellow will help provide that. Um, I will be doing some glazes over these yellows of reds and that will help create the overall look of our mall here. Got to think about where the where the red is, where the black is on him. I definitely am using reference. I have reference up on one of my monitors uh, to remind myself of where all the little lines are. And if anything pulls up too heavily I'll take that second brush, clean that up. I don't want paint pulling up in those little uh, face markings. Savvy and you can Savvy and you can see these are sculpted on. The little tattoos are sculpted on. Some things will leave the free hand. Some things we'll leave, we'll try to sculpt on. It's a lot of it's a matter of, um, you know, there's a lot of factors that go into what can be sculpted on and what has to be freehanded. Um, a lot of engineering um, considerations, uh, production considerations, things like that. want just some more yellow. He's got a bare chest. Just want some yellow on there. 
to bring that up. There we go. Yeah, with that ochre, he is kind of looking like Savage. All right, let's take a little brown. Now his shirt is brown. I'm just gonna kind of wash over the zenithal. Because I want some of that white showing through the top. Let's me build in my shadows and highlights much easier. This miniature, super excited to be painting this up. Um, when this came over from the Fancy Flight Design Studio, it was, um, saw it and I was like, that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And then we started working on, we had the kind of raw sculpt and we, we worked on it a little bit and I thought this is a great little dynamic mall. So it's pretty fun finally getting to see him paint it up. Ah, uh, da 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 da. Is mall red with black stripes or black with red stripes? Uh, that's a great question. How do you choose paint to use as a primer? Uh, I use, I use airbrush primer. Um, I almost always prime with an airbrush. Um, I don't like fighting against humidity. Um, I don't like, um, I don't like opening a can of can primer and shaking it and it, it being bad and wrecking a, a perfectly good miniature. Um, so I, I use primer, I use airbrush primer because it's more controllable and predictable. So red, the the reason I, it's yellow right now is because it's setting up the red. I'm going to use it to set up the red. How do I choose a paint to, oh, it's primer. I answered that question. I got it, nailed it. Nailed it, did it. Answer that one. So I'm going to take some gray and I'm going to sketch in some highlights over the zenith. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want uh, kind of a different tone than the white and black provide for the for the black jerkin. So I'm going to use this to kind of sketch in some additional different toned highlights. And we're going to wash this with a black here in a moment. So everything I'm doing is just setting up the next steps. We're preparing. We have to prepare for battle. Uh, Pally says, asks, how much is the base texture by myself and how much is that, uh, there? Uh, the little, the little palisade of Mandalorian architecture is sculpted and comes with the miniature. And some of these rocks and gribble are, come with the, come with the miniature. I added all the little gravel and a couple of little sculpted rocks to kind of increase the overall story. I said prepare for battle and I got a song stuck in my head. Yikes.
Oh, his shoulder, just like that. Quick and easy. Let's add a little white to that. Go to the tippy tops. Like I said, we're just preparing for the next steps. If you've been watching me paint all weekend, you probably haven't seen me do do anything like this. It looks weird right now. It kind of feels like light side wall. Do the base elements come pre-attached to the base, or is it a blank base that you can add your own scheme to? Yeah, this is it's. It's just a basing element, so you can, it's a blank base and then the little plastic element just gets glued to it, so you can do kind of whatever you want. I mean, even if it came with a fully sculpted base, you could always just use another base and do whatever you want. We do make hobby games after all, so feel free to hobby. Decorate the base how you want. If you want to do indoor, not inside, but E-N-D-O-R, indoor assault wall, like, you know, decorate him up on some uh, verdant base. Like we talk in several other streams, it's the joy of hobby miniature games for me, and hopefully you too, what it provides, I guess, is the best way to say, is that ability to tell the story yourself and uh, to create something that you can be uniquely proud of, right? This is my mall. This is my um, Padme. Um, so you get to Paint it your way and tell the story and be part of the universe. And that's that's what's really cool about and what's unique about miniature games is you can take the miniature and not only tell the story on the tabletop with your friends through the process of rolling dice and stuff like that. You get to tell that narrative and oh man, do you remember that time ball? like charged and like, ah, oh, it was the best. But you get to paint up the miniature and be like, well, you know, I decided I wanted Maul to be yellow, ochre, like Savage. And that's cool. So we're doing the silver legs and the little silver bits on his uh, belt and wrist and the lightsaber. So this is the part of the measure where it's like, it's called the ugly phase a lot of times. We call it the ugly phase. It's a prof professional term. Or it doesn't quite make sense yet. But it will. I mean, I hope. I hope it's going to make sense. It might not. I might boff it. I have boffed it before. This is the natural part of learning and growing and being a human. I'm totally not looking at chat because I'm all. Uh, this is not Savage Press. This is Maul. I just have him yellow right now. We're going to build into the red. Which I think we'll do now. We're going to take some red. And come into the torso here. 
So what's going to happen is that's going to give, that yellow is going to provide a nice undertone to the red to make it a little richer and a little more vibrant. We don't want that on our dark saber. Now we'll repaint it later. So grumpy looking. He's just the grumpiest looking man. I painted a couple of uh, mall faces recently and I always have to like double check double check the red versus black placements here his cheeks are black his ears are black those squiggles are black and we sort of uh, came through and simplified uh, the shapes around the mouth because he actually has like a very complex um, He has these very complex shapes on his mouth, so we sort of simplified those. To make them stand out and be a little easier to deal with. Because they were pretty tricky. And just casting, let me tell you, casting, really tough on this. It looks like Josh got, after he got ruffle stomping around for it. I thought Josh had that. I thought he had it. I was rooting for Josh. I was rooting for Josh. All right, let's take some black. We're going to take black wash. We're going to go over his Sith robes. Because he's not Sith, actually. Not in this version. We're going to just go over that. And you can see that kind of warm gray provides a wonderful new dynamic to that black wash once we apply it. Being real careful not to get on his face for some reason. You can totally get on the back of his head. It doesn't matter. That's The back of his head is totally black. But habits of being careful. Working around that dark saber. Uh, I, I'm not allowed to talk about the rules for this mall. I think we got some, I'm sure the dev development team want to talk about some stuff with him. Plus, I don't have cards in front of me. I'll just get it wrong.
No glove this time? No, I got a kickstand. I got my kickstand, so I don't need a glove. Let's do this. Speaking of. Same black wash right over uh, the gloves and the silver of his gloves. And I am painting this up just for myself, so it can be a little messy, it can be a little unclean, it doesn't have to be perfect, you know? It's for gameplay, it's not for competition, so I don't feel compelled to make it perfect. I feel compelled to make it cool and awesome and to bring me joy. That's the destiny of this miniature. So that same black wash right over top of the silvers there. We can go to the belt. I like his wrestling belt here. What are your thoughts on painting iconic characters versus painting non-iconic characters? Oh, uh, are you meaning painting them in their non-canonical colors? Is that the question you're asking? Just want to make sure I understand the question fully before I answer. There's been plenty of times I think I understand the question and I don't. And then I bop it. I shall await your clarification and happily answer to the best of my ability. That's really all I can do. Just do stuff to the best of my ability. It's all any of us can do. Oh, for my own stuff? I, no, I, I, I paint it what I think looks cool from my own stuff. Now, painting for work, that's a different story altogether. We're just gonna use the same black wash once again. And the lightsaber and the glove over here. This shirt's really sticking out now. Needs a dark wash. Needs to be darkened up. I do some conversions. I used to do more. I've gotten lazy over the years. I love conversions. I love a good classic conversion where somebody takes takes a bit from one miniature and a bit from another miniature, kit bashes them together, uses some putty, some guitar wire. I always think that stuff is just so cool looking. Blackwash on the metal legs. All right, let's start blackening in the skin. Yeah, this guy looks great from a lot of angles. Let's 
It's got that power and dynamism. And a lot of times in photography, things get um, sort of, there's a foreshortening effect in photographs. Um, so things can look kind of smashed up. It's a really tricky thing to deal with, especially with miniatures. So it always looks better when you get it in person. You can kind of really see what's going on to rotate it around. And get the feeling and the emotion out. Uh, this little diamond is black. We're going to take our time here or I'm going to mess it up. I'm going to be real patient. I'm not going to rush. I'm going to take my time. I can choose where I put my paint. I really need a better picture of him, I think. Oh yeah, there we go. I know I can't see that painting his eye sockets. Got the ones above his mouth. This is kind of the one of the areas we sort of simplified. And I always forget which way. The dot in the center. So we had to simplify his chin because he's got a lot of chin markings and there's not a lot of space there. There's a lot of markings going around that chin. There's a really tiny little area. Not a lot of space. Uh, it's, it's, it's black paint just really really thin so I just add a little water and got a good fine tip brush and just sort of just sort of paint it on just going at it uh, the squiggles go up and around the horns if I remember correctly I call those the squiggles The mall squiggles. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Feeling pretty good. Uh, the, yeah, the, the rubble base is separate. The underside of his nose is black. I feel like I'm forgetting something. I really need a real zoomed in picture of his face. Like a super zoomed in picture. There we go. Zigzags. Oh. This goes. Okay. 
We'll go around that horn. A little more wet paint. It's got the tiniest little dot. The tiniest little dot. Now you can see why I did the yellow now, right? Like once that black goes on there, and that yellow and that red work together really makes the face stand out. It kind of provides some instant highlighting to the red. Nobody's very talkative. Chat, I'm your captive audience. <laughs> We're enthralled. Just use that tip of that brush. Let the brush do its job. The brush wants to work. And I know sometimes the brush can be obtuse. I've dealt with obtuse brushes before too. Sometimes you're like, brush, do the job. And the brush is like, nah, dog. Like, please. And it's like, nope. Not today, mate. You're like, okay, fine. Then you make it bend to your will. With the power of the Darksaber. All right. Chest tattoos. He's so ripply. These I'm not going to be super picky about. Good enough. Battle Forces. You have to go watch stream on that one. I just want to say you're my favorite painter. Oh no, don't say that. You're gonna make me blush. Kevin knows I'm a blusher. Thank you, Moltis. I appreciate it. That's my goal. I want you I want you to I want you to feel like you can you can paint. You know, I want everybody to be able to accomplish what they set out to do, right? You know, we're all on different points of the same path. And, you know, if sometimes I need motivation to get off the couch and not play my new video game and paint. I paint a lot, though, I got to admit. I do paint a lot. Um, but... Hopefully, we at Atomic Mass help provide some inspiration to for you to get your army painted up and, you know, try something new, right? We're all here to do stuff for fun, and um, major game for us is the most fun we can have. Many of us are longtime miniature hobbyists and gamers. Um... You know, Sheikh Pagani and I have been around the block a, a few times, and uh, Josh, Kevin, you know, we love miniature games. It's a lot of fun and interesting and cool. How to get a good effect that combines rubble, like on MCP, I'm not quite sure 
what you mean. Can you please clarify Mike's coder just a little bit more? I would not pick up the dark saber. I don't want that kind of responsibility. That's too much responsibility. I got plenty of responsibility. I don't need more. Dark sabers or lightsaber effects. Gonna take some white, some yellow. This is something I've been playing with and practicing. I don't know if I quite have lightsabers the way I want them. But I keep trying new ways of going about it and eventually I'll get exactly what I want or close enough, something to it. Yeah, you can do the same thing. You can, you can, you can cover this up and make it, or like put some putty in this and just make it a rock and then pumice over it. This is just pumice and gravel over top of it. You know, I hobbied my base, you know, like a hobbyist. So you can do the same thing. I think I've said it before, you know, to a hobbyist, all bases are blank. Everything is just a canvas for you to explore and uh, play on. And with a hobby, all things are possible. So if you can dream it, you can be it. Let's put some of this khaki on there. All right, let's start. What time is it? Oh. Do I got plenty of time, do I? No, 20 minutes. 20 minutes? Seems like I need to work on, I still need to, do, let's do the dark saber. Everyone wants to see dark saber, right? Is that right? Let's do dark saber. And then hopefully get to the lightsaber. I think we can do them both. So Brendan painted the dark saber on the studio mall. One with a dry minute. And uh he sent me a few images and I was like, I was like, do this, do this. He's like, got it. And of course he nails it, right? So I kind of like, this is how I would paint it, approach. And he's like, yep, that makes sense, got it. And of course he paints it and just knocks it out of the park and makes it look super cool. So, um, you know, usually, usually I come into these, I'm like, I don't have a plan. I actually have a plan because I directed the one that's the only other one that's been painted in the world. So I kind of know what I want and I'm going to approach it the exact same way and see if I can pull it off as good as Brendan. That's going to be the trick because Brendan's good. I love, I love painting with somebody like Brendan who uh, kind of shores up my weaknesses and I shore up his. We're gonna let that dry just a little bit more. That dark side has just a few wet spots. I wanna grab some red paint, some red ink actually. I'm gonna thin that out a lot really thin it out. We're gonna let that dry. This is probably gonna take a couple layers. 
All right, dark saber, pure white on the brush. We're going to start on the back edge here. Is this sliding around? Is this me? It's me. Let's get that in there. How's that look? Can everybody see it good? Yeah. So I'm going to use the side of the brush. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint an edge. Like so. I'm going to do that whole front edge. I'm going to come in and do little tiny dots. Right now they can be pretty uniform. They don't have to quite hit the edge if you sort of buff it. It gets harder as you get to the tip because you're running out of space to make them interesting. Oh, hello, Miss Half Damage. I have not seen you in a while. Hello, hello, hello. We're going to do the same thing on the back edge. Can y'all see that? I would normally flip him upside down for this. Whoops. It's okay. Whoops is okay to say when you're a miniature painter, not when you're a tattooist. I'm going to go back over again. Kind of expand on the idea. Make sure the tip is wet and the paint is loose. I always kind of vary the direction of the brush. I kind of rotate the brush if you're paying attention here and there. It's getting dry. So I'm kind of in the zone. I think I could literally do that all day. I'm getting crashed. Party crasher shick. That's what happens when they tell you this is the hobby studio and then they tell you, oh no, you're in the other studio. The other studio. You gotta come get all your hobby stuff. 
Uh, Grim Wolf UK, hi from the UK. Dallas, is that a looking at the mod? Could I guess give him a dark saber and twin lightsaber? Um, yes. I don't know if you can in the game, but you miniature wise you can. I can't stop you. I'm not the AMG police. That's Josh. Josh is the fun police. Stop the fun, guys! Yeah, that's, that's exactly, it sounds just like him. Listen to me. 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 Where would we do without it? Nowhere good. Not streaming. He's the whole reason this outfit exists. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go back to the lightsaber. They're going to pretend like that's not loud. Look at him. That's a professional. Legit chick. How many mats? Five? I can't see her hand. I'm eight minutes. I don't think I can quite finish an eight. I don't think I can quite finish an eight. Sorry, chat. We can highlight our cloth though. So I'm just Take that same gray we painted earlier and add some black to it. All right, chat, we only got eight minutes, and then we got, coming up next is a new challenger. Uh, I believe that Chick is painting, correct? I believe so. Yeah, I think that's why I came and got the hobby stuff. All the paints in this studio. I stole it all, chat. So get ready for that. And let's discuss, what do we have left on our mall here? Is there anything you want to see before we go? I don't quite have the lightsaber done. We're just letting that ink dry. Whoops. Clean it up with the second brush. Want the getch. Says the dark saber is amazing. Thank you. We're gonna go back to some yellow and we're just gonna keep building up this effect. Five minutes. What color is his horns? They're just bone, right? Yeah. So I, I usually do, I've been doing these lightsabers in 
several steps. And I like the way they look. I usually pick three sides for light, one of them being toward the ground. so close to done but he's not gonna get done but that's okay we had so much fun painting up our mall painting up our mall I'm just in the I'm just in the zone right now. Just work your way around. He's got so many little horns. Oh, MJ Sculpts, I oh, hear that is. Mike Jones, what up? Mike works very closely with Marco and the engineering team as the uh, sculpt coordinator. Um, making sure all the sculpts get it. Oh, am I supposed to say that, Mike? Or are you, are you, are you in secret alias land? I, I apologize. I apologize if I ruined it. I might have made Mike mad at me. Sorry. He's like cussing at me right now. Dallas, you weren't supposed to say who I am. Yeah, I get into the zone. Like the Zen. Uh, I talk about like your brain gets in that alpha state where you're just kind of floating and doing exactly what you want to do. It's really relaxing and great. I got like what, two minutes? No, probably a little bit less. A little bit less than two minutes. He's got two horns around the back of his head. I still need to shade and highlight the horns. But at least I got a base coat on them. Wrap it up, they're saying. Wrap it up. All right. Well, that is our one hour on mall. As usual, hopefully it was inspirational, aspirational, and educational. Um, I think he's looking pretty good. I just got a few things to uh, finish up. I gotta finish up the lightsaber. I gotta do a little highlighting on the uh, metals and the blacks. Shade the horns and dot the eyes one more time and then finish up the base. And then we got a maul ready to hit the table. So get ready. We're going over to New Challenger. See you in five minutes and see you later. <laughs>